Today we're gonna paint Rolf the Barbarian from Zombicide in under 90 minutes. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind, the great spirit. Welcome back to the channel collectors. So today we have for you Rolf the Barbarian. As per the Orb Abomination video, we are trying to do, nail this cool aesthetic environment ambient light thing that I'm trying to do right now. In my opinion, Rolf is one of my best painted miniatures in this 90 minute range and I'd like to show you how I do it. If you're ready, let us begin. Alright, welcome back. So today we'll be painting Rolf the Barbarian in under 90 minutes. I'm really pleased about the end result for Rolf the Barbarian which you can see at the end of the video and my approach to painting this new uh, this miniature would be using a new color scheme which I've learned online over the past week so I've been speaking to this dude called uh, Messi Milano and he's shared with me that in his shadows he uses a very dark purple and I've been looking at this tutorial that I've been trying to generate a warm purple as the base so that you contrast the cool atmosphere which I'll be um, placing on this miniature. So right here I've used a magenta, uh, sorry, a violet from Chimera as the base coat. The violet, the violet is actually mixed with a uh, red oxide also and gradually the as you guys can see in the mix, I'm adding a little bit more and more red oxide and adding more a bit of the Jusonia skin tone which creates this initial shadow. As you guys notice in my initial shadow, uh, initial layers, I don't really go into the details. So you just want to make sure that the volumes are correct before going into the details. What I like about this miniature is that anatom um, the anatomy of this miniature is, is really really correct and it's a very good example for you to learn how to paint um, male, male characters okay so the main mid-tone for this flash it's more of a red oxide mixed in with a bit of Jusonia skin tone as you guys can see right now while I'm not going much into the details I'm ignoring the areas where there will be cast shadows okay so now this is the first mid-tone which I'll be placing I like to I like to organize my colors in a man in a mat manner where the paints are really pre-mixed so that I can go to the previous colors I've learned this and developed this uh, preference over my past few weeks painting one miniature within 90 minutes and I find that it's a very effective technique because it allows me to not only go back to the previous color, it allows me to make intermediate blends when I need to. And I realized that blending doesn't really take a lot of time if you're not looking for a super super perfectly smooth blend. If you're looking for a tabletop miniature like this, a very basic wet blend would do the trick so how I like to do it is that I like to touch on the highlight color and I just use the previous color to just uh, feather out the edges so that there's no sharp edge okay so as you guys can see the muscles are, are really showing and I think that that um, this miniature really allows this technique to really really pop and show I remember when I when I was painting this miniature I had a lot of time left over which was very surprising because I remember when during my first week when I was painting the zombie side um, ultimate heroes ultimate survivors edition I always painted right to the top because I, I found that I didn't have enough time to finish the miniature however with with the later miniatures I find that I'm left with more than maybe 15 to 20 minutes per miniature which I find that uh, 
as an experiment, I can say that I have become a much faster painter. And I've also realized that when I'm painting miniatures, I really need to take a break. I can't do really marathon sessions. And I think it's something that I would like to discuss in a further video. And if you'd like to hear me talk about that, uh, you can let me know in the comments below because it really helps. Alright, so what's really important in this painting technique is that throughout the entire duration, no white was used. I've only gone as far as an off-white for most of the surfaces and white was probably uh, used very sparingly only on the glints of the sword. This is very important because you don't want to portray the wrong impression where the skin is actually emitting light. Why the glints are used because relative to the skin the sword is a lot more reflective. Alright. So as I mentioned in many of my videos, uh, hair needs to be highlighted as a volume rather than the individual strands in the, in, in, in the initial stages. I see this mistake being made in, in many uh, beginner miniature painters and I'd like to point this out to all of you guys. So I'm giving Rolf a, a glossy black hair and the colors I've used are black, few blue and a bit of a bit of Vallejo off-white. No colors mentioned for the black uh, from Vallejo model colors. As for the as for the leather wraps on his arms and his I'm gonna call it a cute. I've used a uh, raw umber and burnt umber mix from Juice Onya, mixed in with a little bit of flesh, and eventually highlighted with a bit of uh, eventually highlighted with a, with a bit of off white mixed in with a bit of scale fluorescent blue. One thing that I like to point out in my recent videos is that I've been using fluorescent colors in my highlights because I find that it gives this eerie glow looking effect which I'm trying to portray. Alright, so as you guys have seen in many of my 90 minute videos, <laughs> the non-metallic metal part uh, becomes increasingly easy with more practice. I would like to encourage all of you guys to really try to, to paint one miniature a day because you get really really quick and you get really really precise. At the start, I had to con consciously tell myself that okay, today is a precision day. But over time, I've developed a, a preference for a certain style of painting, and I think I got a lot more precise given the 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 very limited time I'm spending with the miniatures. And I've also developed a repertoire of of quick tricks which I can employ on these miniatures so that they look very coherent. I find that my mindset from this this week which is probably about week 3 a lot more calm and a lot more controlled because I actually know the sensation of when the miniature will be finished and how much it will be done given the amount of time. So right now I'm working on the little details, the go. The non-metallic metal go can be seen in my tu tutorials. 
the detailed recipe can be seen there but I'm just gonna roughly run you through the recipe right now the base color is uh, raw umber with uh, red oxide from Chimera then eventually gradually adding more yellow oxide from Chimera then eventually adding in ivory from Vallejo model color and eventually adding a bit of white and adding a bit of fluorescent blue into the highlights I've made some alterations in my previous video I've used uh, Chimera green in the whites however to allow Rolf to blend in with the rest of the miniatures I've used I've used uh, fluorescent blue instead so as you guys can see with uh, 33 minutes left on the clock I'm actually quite done with Rolf already so yeah I found that I was a lot faster and now I can go into a lot more detail so I'll be improving the readability of Rolf by focusing on the little details so that at least the groin section doesn't look like a bunch of uh, paint splatter I want the components such as the hanging belt the sheath to be all uh, clearly visible and readable by the viewer and I'm making the volumes a little bit more pronounced on his shoulder as you guys can see the, the, the value which I just placed on was a little bit too high so I had to tune it down I remember on Rolf, I made the mistake of using a very red tone on his lips and <laughs> turned him into a very... Um, I couldn't tell his gender whether he was male or female. So uh, I think we should try to avoid very bright reds on male faces. As you guys can see right now, I'm going along the edges to make sure that every single component is readable. I'm even going to do some black lining. Yeah, this is the part where I've added a little bit too much red onto Rolf. It started looking a bit too feminine for my liking. And to spend quite a lot of time to, to really fix this. As you can see right here, Rolf looks a bit female, female, but we just gotta fix it along the way. So how did I fix this face? I've used a, a warmer brown in lieu of a red to shadow his lips and I think it helps a lot. So this is the finished result for Rolf. I hope you like the result. Did you like Rolf? I really really like Rolf. Let me know what you think about Rolf in the comments below, okay? So, you guys know the drill, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification icon. We post videos every day now, so don't miss out, okay? So, if you can afford it, become a Patreon today. At the $2 range, Patrons get extended play footage to many of my videos, so you guys get to scrutinize every stroke which I paint on my miniatures, okay? So, I hope to interact with you guys, and I'd like to thank my Patrons for allowing me to do this. I hope to see you in the next video. See you guys!